Hola queens, welcome to my channel. It's your girl Queen T here, also known as the Fiance Coach. If you're new, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Who am I? I'm an author, blogger, blogger, and all that other good stuff. I'm your one and only favorite Fiance Coach out here with my fiancés and wives in the waiting, helping them become the best wife that they were called and meant to be. All right, so today's episode is much sooner than the last. I have to give credit to someone that made a comment on my most recent video. Um, it was the video that I posted about the number one task that you should be doing while preparing for your wedding. If you haven't watched that video, make sure you watch that immediately after this. But this person brought up a huge topic that I feel as though is very relevant and it kind of goes hand in hand. If not number one task, it's not a task that you need to do, but it's more like a mindset that you have to put yourself in this, this uh, position to be ready for. So the person was in agreement with what I said about the video, about the number one task that women should be chasing after and doing as they're preparing for their wedding. However, she brought up head of household. Now, I say that because my fiancés, my wives in the waitings, my beautiful queens, as you all are, um, we tend to be women who are on the move, women who are purpose-driven. We are women who just, we, we are always after a goal, right? So when you become a wife, things change. Like, yes, you should always be goal-driven. You should always be purpose-driven. That should not change. However, when you are a wife, you are not the head of the household anymore, all right? Like, you probably were living by yourself when you're engaged and as you're preparing to become a wife, you don't even realize that you're about to move in with someone who um, is it's totally different from you, came from a different family. Yeah, you've probably been dating for six, at least six months, one year, two year plus, but you realize that when you move in with your significant other, things change. The way that you do things, it just tends to change. Um, and when this person brought up a um, the head of household, I thought about, wow, like how many of my queens consider themselves like this independent woman, right? Shout out to Neo and his song, um, Independent Woman. That was a big thing. I think that, is that, that song like 20 years old now? It probably is. but. Oh my God, time is really moving. But back to my point. Being a wife is also putting yourself in a mindset that you are a leader in your purpose and in how you're serving. However, you as a woman, a believer, um, if that what you consider yourself a, a believer or a follower of Christ, you are setting yourself up in position to do submission to your husband. Yes, I did drop that S word. It is something that I'm planning on talking about a little later. I'm not quite ready for it, but it is a topic that we need to discuss. <laughs> Personally, I don't even deserve to have this um, YouTube channel or my podcast if I don't even mention the S word, okay? So we're gonna refer to it as the S word. <laughs> so let that be known. Head of household, your husband, it sounds easy because there are a lot of women, we're so used to serving. So what difference does it make to serve this man that we said that, yes, I want to marry you. Yes, I want to have kids with you. I want to do life with you. I want to. I want you to be my partner in life. Not my partner in crime, but my partner in life, my partner in commitment. But do you really realize what you're saying? You're saying that you, as a woman, are going to submit and be to this man that you're giving your life to, which is a beautiful thing. Marriage is so beautiful. But that independent woman complex in you, if it's not in check now, it will cause issues in your marriage. What are you talking about, Queen C? This is what I'm talking about. Queen C is a person that when she's ready to do something, 
um, when she's ready to set up a podcast, when she's ready to uh, post a video, when she's ready to spend money, um, you know, purchases over a hundred dollars and things like that. Queen T looks at her own money and doesn't consult with nobody. <laughs> I just, if I have it, I'm getting it. If I have the idea, I'm doing it. I don't have to consult with anyone, but God about it. That's it. When you are married, that changes. There's an extra layer to the onion. It's like an onion. You can't just say, oh, um, this jacket is only $105. Like, I have the money in my account. I'm just going to buy it. No. That may work for some people, but if you're talking about having a purposeful marriage, you this is something you need to be in communion with your husband about, about spending the money. Even if you have the money, you want to be in communion and communicate that with him. Why do you do this? Because you are respecting him as the head of household and you're letting him know that Yes, I know I could have made this decision by myself, but I'm showing respect and deference to you as my husband that I want to consult these things with you. Um, and, you know, I don't want you to look at it as like, oh, I have to get permission because some of your husbands, like my husband, will probably be like, yeah, I don't care what you do. Go ahead and do it. Yeah, that's great. They should be like, oh, babe, OK, whatever, go do it. But you don't know the impact that it makes in the level of respect that they see that you have for them. I'm telling you, Queen, this goes a long way. So that head of household and that independent woman complex can cause you damage if you forget that you have to show your husband respect. So look at it as I want to show respect to my husband and show him that um, show him that I, I admire him as the leader of the house and I acknowledge his position and Lord over our household that I want to just share this information with him. Don't look at it as I have to get permission from my husband because if you, it's, it's a mindset thing like I mentioned in the beginning. If you look at it as permission, you're going to feel like you're being controlled. Marriage is not about control. Let's point that out first and foremost. I'm not telling you to um, marry someone who is controlling, marry someone who doesn't let you go left or right and, and um, literally will um, scream at you or do some type of abusive behavior if you do something without consulting them. That is not what I'm telling you. I'm telling you that preparing for a wife because you are a purposeful woman and that is what your husband that is what attracted your husband to you, how driven you are, how goal-oriented you are, how, how kind-hearted you are, how you have this servant mentality. That's what drew your king to you. And what you want to do is as you're becoming a wife, you kind of want to get in position and let him know that I'm able to still be a leader without losing any of my value and respect you at the same time as my leader, as the leader of our household. No, you don't control me. I know that I don't need your permission, but I love you enough that I want to consult these consult with you about these tasks that I'm trying to complete. All right. So that's a way to look at it. Um, I, I, I think the lady that I really want to figure out her name um, on. If you follow me on IG at the real Tarjay underscore, um, literally, I just posted the video uh, yesterday. And uh, it was a snippet of the video that I recently did on the number one task you need to do while preparing for your wedding. And she talked about head of household. And I was like, oh, this is so good. I have to let the women know this immediately because it's not just about us. It's not just about preparing to be the best wife version that you were meant and called to be, but it's also about getting yourself in alignment for the, your position in this family that you're forming with your husband, giving him the respect that, he, the respect that he deserves, 
Um, you know, you're, you're marrying someone. I'm assuming that if you're marrying them, you have a sense of respect for them. You know, I hope that it's more than just tolerance. There's a sense of respect for them. And, and you see something in them that has uh, characteristics that you feel like you can definitely follow. You know, we all are leaders in life, but don't be so much of a leader that you feel like you're too good to follow anyone because we all have something to learn in life. And I'm telling you that by showing your husband this simple matter of respect is going to take your marriage far. Um, I'm a living witness of it. My husband to this day, even doing this video, I, I'm not even gonna lie to you. Even doing this video, it's late at night. I'm here in Germany. If you don't know, I'm based in Germany. I'm from the States, but I'm living in Germany uh, with my husband. I It's late at night, my time. Um, it's more so like still light you all's time. But I literally went to my husband and I said, hey babe, I just need 10 minutes to do this video. Um, and he was like, okay. Like he gave me this weird look like, well, okay. And he was like, what do you need from me? I'm like, nothing. I just want you to know that I'll be in bed soon. And with that said, lady, actually, ladies, I just hit 11 minutes. He, he really doesn't care. But I'm sure that he admires and he appreciates that I consulted that with him. And um, that's a way that you can build your marriage. That's a way that you can build your communication. That's a way that you can continue to build appreciation, love, and respect in your marriage. So practice it now, my fiancés and wives in the waiting. And I promise you, you will see the benefits of it and the fruit that will develop. I love y'all. Take care. Have a good one.